Oh, oh hello. Welcome to the Matrixer. As you can see, today we have a special topic with Shiva and Jonathan. And the topic today is hybrid incarnations. A very exciting topic, I think. And this is about the beings who take part in the reincarnation cycle or reincarnation cycle and have been integrated into it. So, let's get started then. I would say, if we first list which hybrid incarnations we can think of, which would be as possible as aliens who have been trapped here, or experiments. The hybrid. First of all, there are the hybrids that we all know from the greys, who try to populate their planet with bodies that, like us, are able to feel emotions. And that's why the aliens come here, the greys, to kidnap people and do genetic experiments to create these hybrid beings and thus have bodies for their next reincarnation that are able to feel emotions again. Because originally the greys filtered out the emotions genetically and after thousands of years they eventually realized that they made a big mistake. And precisely because they couldn't develop further, spiritually too. Correct. They just didn't get that far in their spiritual development because they lacked the feelings or the emotions and then regretted this civilization mistake. And that's why there are all the alien abductions. But that is not the issue now. No. It's about hybrid incarnation. This means that there are beings that were originally another being and then decided to incarnate as a human being. Exactly among them are then, as I said, the aliens, natural beings, angels. Exactly. Let's start with the aliens. For example, the reptilians. Every one of you knows. If they die here, they will be caught in the cycle of reincarnation and will be reborn as a human being. But you can already recognize them by their eyes. You can do that with many things, as we have found. You can recognize them, for example by their ears or their physique. So you already have traits that suggest you're a hybrid now. Yes, there is a penalty for the reptilian race as well. That is, if someone has broken certain rules within the reptilian species, then they are abandoned on Earth and then just executed. And so they join the cycle of reincarnation. Of course they also get amnesia and are then reborn as a human being. And that would be a reptilian hybrid. A reptilian hybrid. Yes, the reptilian hybrid. This also applies to all aliens that land here on Earth. When they die here on the surface of the Earth, they are taken into the cycle of reincarnation. And then you are an alien-human hybrid. The same goes for natural beings. There are also natural beings. However, they often decide voluntarily to incarnate here as a human being in order to regain or rediscover their creative power. And, because they just can't do that on their side. Yes, the nature beings can only change themselves. They can change their appearance or change their clothing. But that's where it ends. For example, they can't create buildings. Exactly. And for that, the elves, dwarves, fairies, whatever, reincarnate as humans. And so that they can rediscover their creative power. So that they, for example, humans can build houses for fairies when they firmly imagine and materialize it. And the problem, unfortunately, is that the humans who incarnate as elves and in and whatever, unfortunately forgot that they were originally there as elves and incarnated here. We all forget that. 
Yes, you can usually recognize the elven hybrids by their ears. Pointed ears. Sometimes have a bit pointed ears. Or there are also many elves who have just been incarnated as humans who are very dissatisfied with their ears. So most of the time the elves are all unhappy with their ears. They either find they stick out or look weird or are too big or too small. Everyone is always very dissatisfied with their ears. They also like to hide them under hair. Their ears. They don't like to show them in public. Exactly. The fairies are. I saw one recently. They are very small and filigree in physique and face. The dwarf hybrids are relatively stocky. You can see that too. You can see that in the figure. Also on the upper arms. They're kind of a bit stocky. They deliberately choose a body like that. Well, that's clear. That's right. And the dwarfs can usually be recognized by their legs and arms. So you can see them very well from the limbs. That they are always a bit proportionally different than the body itself, and are often smaller. So there are actually no big dwarf hybrids. They are just a bit smaller. Often only 1.5 meters to 1 point much larger. They are often not much larger. Exactly. Which ones do we still have? Goblin. For example, leprechauns, yes. You can always recognize them. Very funny. Always having fun in. They really do have a funny face. And this charisma, that's nice. You can tell. So when you meet people like that, you know that. Yes. There are so they have an incredibly strong affinity for water. So they could actually spend their whole lives in the water. Always want to go swimming and can play around in the water for hours. And they can usually be recognized by their shape. They're always a bit very female characters, I would say. And yes, mostly the mermaids are human hybrids. Then there are fairies. You said yes. The small filigree ones. Elves are also very slim. Often, and a bit pale in the face too, sometimes. But also bigger, because there are so many elves, you shouldn't confuse them with fairies. They've grown quite big, most of them. Yes, that's right. Then there are the angels. The angel hybrid who choose to voluntarily incarnate here on Earth, mostly with the background of what to do or help to change. Actually very, very helpful, such angel hybrids. For example, Keanu Reeves is an angel hybrid. There are quite a few celebrities that you can use as an example. As with the elves, for example, Nicole Kidman. And here with the leprechauns. Here Robin Williams was one, for example. Good actor. Yes, and when it comes to mermaids, I wouldn't necessarily know who you could use as an example from the prominent class. But you can pay attention to such small signs and then often draw conclusions as to whether they are such a hybrid. Well, we have to say that we're practically all hybrids. Because basically we're all aliens. There really is no such thing as a human being. Actually, we all come from other planets and have chosen to incarnate and play here on Earth. But in the meantime the mix has grown even more, so more aware of the natural beings and coming in here. You can see it. You can tell better. In the free universe, the Earth is also often referred to as a ghetto planet. Because everything gathers here. All hybrids. All kinds of species that gather here. That's why there are so many different races, also on Earth. That doesn't really exist on other planets. On other planets there is a species and a race. And on Earth it's just not like that. It's all a big jumbled heap. This is exactly what has happened over the last millennium. Originally there were different creator gods. One created the race, the other created the race, the other created the race. 
so the blacks, the whites, the Asians. And at some point and actually they wanted to keep it all separate. But somehow it all mixed up. Now we have a big jumble of gene pools. And yes, there is. Exactly. And the creator gods didn't think that was so cool. But now it happened. Yes, the development is already going so that all the races mix with each other. We still have national borders, but at some point that will no longer be the case. And then you can imagine that every race has free access in every country and can then also develop there. Exactly. The exciting thing about people, human hybrids, who come to us from different civilizations or different levels of existence, is of course the connection between the beings, that of course they all meet here on the ghetto planet and then establish a relationship with one another. And so it can happen that an elf thinks yes, I have to make sure that my people get more creative power. So I incarnate as a human. And after I have just gone through this cycle, then I become an elf again and can help my elf people. So you can cite that as a precedent example that applies to many natural beings. For this reason we have built up some things from nature beings here too, a small elf and a dwarf whistle. Okay, that's a bit big. And that's how you can imagine it. There are also other hybrids. For example. But we don't necessarily know how to list them all. But it is also important that you understand this. The principle that actually a completely different species, which was not originally human, has decided to enter the cycle of incarnation in order to help the people afterwards. Or they just landed here like the aliens who thought, oh crap, I landed here with my UFO. Got out. Tripped. Hit my head. Died. Hell. Now I'm human. I have amnesia and will remain human for the next 500 incarnations. There are of course the alien races who deliberately choose to help an incarnate here. You can sometimes recognize them by their eyes. Big eyes. Very crystal clear eyes, for example. If they come from a creator race that just wants to help play the matrix. They're also called the starseeds, I think. Yes. Yes. I think that's it for today. Yes. If you have any questions about this alien nature being human hybrid then feel free to ask in the comments below. Maybe there will be a question and answer video if there are enough questions. Otherwise we'll see each other again in the next video. Support us buy from our shop so we can keep making videos for you. Give us a like and subscribe to us. Ciao.